Hi, and welcome to this episode of Video Crop. Today, we're going to talk about using films and videos for SaaS marketing, and we have two amazing guests with me. We have Abhinav Arora, who's the co-founder and CMO of Avalon Scenes. Avalon Scenes is an app that helps businesses manage and monetize communities. Abhinav is also an Instagram influencer, so you should totally check him out. The other guest is a long-term client of us, Roshan Karyapa at Vimo. He's the Vice President of Marketing at Vimo. Look them up on getvimo.com. They're a single pane of glass for sellers in the world's largest financial businesses. Roshan is also the host of a podcast series called Startup Operator, which you should totally check out. I'm Lakshmi Rebecca, the co-founder at Red Bangle. We make films and videos for businesses across the world, across industries and across formats. So that's everything from an ad film to an explainer to a corporate film, case studies, recruitment films, you name it, you got it. One place, check out www.redbangle.com. And now let's dive into today's conversation on using films and videos for SaaS marketing. SaaS industry, you know, generated about, I think, $82 billion worth of revenue last year, right? And it's set to grow to about $116 billion by 2026. And, the, and it's both exciting and challenging because we're sitting here, you know, building these global businesses, trying to market globally. And we, and you, neither of you have um, a local marketing team, let's say in the US, which might be a primary market or somewhere in Southeast Asia, which might be a primary market. Help me understand this context that you're working with when it comes to customer acquisition. So it's a very interesting question. And I kind of disagree with the fact that we don't have a local marketing team. I think we have a central marketing team that regionalizes or localizes based on context, right? So let me explain what I mean by that. So when we market in Thailand, for example, it's important for us to understand the context in Thailand, right? Who, who's our user? Who's our buyer? And what is that sales process like? It's very important, especially for us, because we operate in enterprise. Enterprise are large organizations, complex uh, uh, buying behavior and so on. Right. So for us, that is really important. And it's been an interesting experience, you know, doing the zero to one uh, and beyond in all of these different geographies. So we've expanded to over the last four years, we've expanded to the US, Indonesia, Thailand, Japan. And of course, we're based in India, right? But when Roshan says that you gotta go to when you go to go to, go to Thailand, it's gonna be a lot different. When you go to go to Indonesia, very different because these guys speak their own regional language, and I don't think you can crack these markets without taking uh, a trip down there or hiring a remote consultant. However, when you talk about US, UK, Canada, and uh, other English-speaking countries, probably Australia, the thing with them is, I mean, being the top one or top five percent of India or top three percent of India that we all are. We, it, it's not that hard to relate to these guys. Avalon started about five, six years ago when we were selling services and we only had clients from US, etc. And we used to be, you know, on the call, we used to speak English, we used to understand all these things. So I basically sort of understand, you know, what lands and what doesn't land. Now what we're trying to do is we're trying to, we've, I mean, today we're living in an age where you use Notion, where you use Monday, where you use all these tools. So you can actually, you know, replicate these tools, reverse engineer these tools and build a product that actually works in US and matches US standard. And Indian software engineering is much cheaper, faster, efficient than those guys. Now coming to marketing, you understand, uh, you know, how, what they speak because you've seen their ads, you've seen the ads of flick up and all that. The problem comes is you may be talking like them, but you're not matching the accent. You may be saying the right things. You may be writing the same word, but if your face is not really landing there unless you become like a Jay Shetty or a Vishen Lakani. Those are the only two Indians that I know that are landing well in the US market. So it's not so much about, uh, you know, the con concepts or the contents, more about the delivery of it. Mm -hmm. That is the only problem which, uh, you know, I think uh, becomes a deterrent to the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, I think it's, it's very much feasible to sell to these... Uh, countries without having a local marketing being there, at least in your early stages. So when it comes to the marketing context for SaaS businesses in India, how important has storytelling become? And what's the trend you're seeing? 
in india you know we've been building these back end applications you know whatever so supply chain software accounting software something else software for three decades right three or four decades with indian it um and we've learned the tech and the product aspects of things i think we're right now in the phase where we're learning how to sell and market and to that end i think videos are or or storytelling as such is the key thing right so that's what i'm really really excited about about the next slack about the next you know drift right i mean if you if you look at slack right it's glorified chat as i mentioned it's if you look at drift it's website chat again right but calling it conversational marketing for example it is amazing amazing i mean they wrote a book about it for god's sake right and i think that is what i'm super excited about so let's talk about video as a delivery tool right um what are your biggest tips to someone who's going to create a great marketing video for their saas product again sitting in india trying to sell globally what what are must haves in that video so i think in 2019 2018 i was working with a few consumer brands i was consulting them and uh, you know we used to do a lot of professionally done stuff like you know we'd go with the uh, full fledged camera set up shoot the guy walking talking set up frames and all that but in 2020 uh, when we did a consumer edtech thing we tried something different we were like boss okay what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use mobile camera and you know shoot like a selfie video though with the kind of instagram videos that you see the kind of tiktok videos that you see they're very handheld shot and you run ads on that surprisingly this tends to do better in your cost per conversion than the other one because it is not an ad it's 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 content disguised as an ad it's more i mean it blends well with the feed whereas your professionally shot video sometimes doesn't so what does what what that tell, tells us is you don't really need a crazy as budget to uh start a video however even if you have great budgets that can be utilized well to produce content that you know is disguised as an ad and when you come to saas it's anyway it's, i mean you you can't just you know direct sell anything to people because the deal value goes all the way from $1000 to $100,000 to half a million dollars like these guys sell so again there there it has to be very contenty you can't uh, just you know be the odd one out in there you can't be a 30 yeah. second sound you bite. can't hack yeah. it sort of thing yeah, yeah. Hmm. no just to add to what he said right i think it's important to break from the clutter either by going super high production like we'll talk about a few examples yeah. right or by being super candid where it doesn't look like an ad right it's someone who's talking to me if you land somewhere in between i think you're screwed right um and i think yeah that is really key to figure out that and you have to have a kernel of an idea right or a story like what is it that you want to talk about i mean this video right i mean it has a certain beginning middle and an end and if you can have that very strong coherent idea message that you want to deliver and also are able to speak well on camera like my friend here okay so great beginning great middle great end um but let's say you were going to give me a brief uh for makri video you, you wanted to make what would you put in that brief start with the audience mm-hmm. yeah so first make zero assumptions that you know someone looking at this will have context of the product the market um, yeah. what you operate in right yeah um, that's a big one because for sure yeah. no creative team sitting on the no outside one. is going to have the context no that you do and even if it's a simple product right or perhaps i mean you think it's simple because you you're kind of living this daily uh, so make zero assumptions uh, usually when i write a brief i mean i mean you've seen my briefs right uh, i make sure that people understand what the product is doing but also i mean how it impacts people's lives right um, and so i mean if it's let's say for insurance right how does the insurance business work right i mean don't just assume that everyone really knows about it a couple of lines to help someone relate to your world i think is like a bare minimum right uh, and then of course you know the classic who the target audience is how will the video um, be used what do you hope to achieve um, and then further down right i mean what is the message you want to convey and then of course write the script out and maybe some suggestions on how it could be shot for those who can't write a script just write a draft structure something yeah. something <laughs> just a beginning middle and an end you know um and and then you can always wordsmith it later right i mean you can always go over these details later but just important to have that kernel of an idea fleshed out so i start with a brief and even for myself right i mean 
So let's talk about the latest video that we're doing, right? Which is the SME video, for example. Now, SME commercial, I mean, I have an understanding of what that is, right? But if I have to convey it to someone in 90 seconds, I need to know it at a whole other level, right? And so I have to do a whole lot of reading and I have to transmit that yeah. to my creative partner, right? And then the both of us have to work together to figure that 90 second, you know, bite. Uh, especially a lot of marketing folks, I mean, think that a brief is for someone it's actually for you. Absolutely is. Yeah. Absolutely is. And what's It lends you a lot more clarity, I think. And what I find very important in a SaaS marketing brief is to actually see all those UI screens that have to be shown. Yeah. We forget that in the brief, right? Uh, most briefs don't come with all the UI screens already. And that's so important because when we get a brief, we start thinking of, okay, what's the story here? What are the characters? And how is it all going to weave together? And then half of it is going to be these UI screens which may or may not be ready to put in a film yet, mm. right? So then you end up having to redesign or re-represent. What are your thoughts on the brief? What would you put in? So I go in a rather hacky manner. You're going to have this uh, thing that you're leading with, whether it's, you know, if it's a sales outreach software, like what do you do? Do you allow better collaboration? If it's a community software, are you also mobile? Some Something that you differentiate, lead with your differentiator. Beyond that, I would say competitors are a blessing. If you're playing in, a, in SaaS, Competitors are a blessing because you have so much to scan up, so much, so so much to read on what's working for the other folks. And if you can find a few ads from those guys, you can also take down certain words uh, that land well with the audience. Like if I'm marketing to the US, I'll scan up 10 other folks who have the same market and I'm like, okay, what are the words that you guys are using? So I can copy those words. Not all. I'll do a mix and match. I'll remix everything, steal like an artist. Mm -hmm. uh, do that. Then go to a non-competitor, see their narrative flow, you know, uh, this is, competitors are for my word discovery. Non-competitors are for my narrative discovery. Okay, how are you pitching? Maybe you're talking about the healthcare industry. But what is the narrative flow? Like, are you showing a doctor and a policeman fighting or something? Maybe I can show, you know, a dentist or Maybe not else. that. Whatever. So, something like that. I mean, whatever the narrative is, you know, how are you attacking uh, the other players in the market? Are you showing grief? Are you showing, uh, you know, a circus? What are you showing? Like, ClickUp does a lot of this thing. ClickUp has... I mean, ClickUp goes to World War II, World War III. I mean, the narratives there are crazy. Similarly, Lucia, uh, you know, brings a baby into uh, NSDR, a sales dev reps uh, office and all that. So you can, these are not my industries, but I can, you know, pick these narratives and instead of applying it to a sales professional, I'll apply it to a marketing professional because that's my industry. So narrative comes from non-competitors. This is a very indie hacker, uh, you know, way because uh, that's how you got to work. And when I'm able to give my team the visual representation, boss, okay, this is the narrative you're going for copy this and these are the words that you're going to insert and this is the one thing that we're pitching it becomes beautiful so like it's a you almost have way. a mood board so what's a favorite budget self-made or what looks like it's almost self-made i love the lucia ads i mean he brought up lucia um see especially when you look at demand right when you look at acquisition it's the same thing right cheaper faster better what I've seen of Lucia, at least these ads that, that you see on YouTube, they are custom produced. They're not self-produced. But what? you yeah. They're custom produced. As in like they're produced by an, a, an agency course, or a yes. video. It's, they're not self-produced, hmm. right? They're not yeah. they're not like we've hacked this kind of thing. We've done it, they've done it ourselves. So if we were to think of even lower on the like budget, the budget. budget, absolutely budget, in an early stage, right? I'm, I'm, I really can't budget. afford a video agency. And today, everybody's handy with a camera. It could be a phone and everybody knows some editing tool or, or something or the other. And both of you, for example, are content creators, right? In, um, so what so, would, yeah, what examples would you Actually, let me add to that, right? So the real budget, budget video that we had, for example, was just Yamini, who's my founder, talking Speaking on camera. Speaking to camera, yeah. That's it. That's the best thing, right? I mean, because... If you can get a founder to articulate the mission and articulate really, you know, what the product does for a particular customer, I mean, that's, that's magic. That's it. You don't need anything else. And, you know, you don't even need a three camera setup, all of this stuff and everything, right? I mean, yeah. you just need that. Yeah. And we had that, you know, I mean, we, uh, we, we still do plenty actually, you know, wherever she talks at events and stuff, I mean, we just get a video reel of that and that's what we run with. Got it. What are your thoughts? I would actually agree. There are, see, there's this venture funding that's uh, made things look pretty and nice and brought a lot of glamour into everything. But what at the end of the day works is the content, is the message that you're giving. And I see a lot of talking head videos doing well for 
so i mean in india we have the luxury to uh, have talent even if you're a bootstrap company you can have a team as big as 10 team people in us you cannot i've seen a lot of these companies i would say they have some of the best uh, talking head videos these are not the most expensive sats but they're doing fairly well buddy boss is one up viral is another and then there's click funnel click funnels again you know they they've done a lot of video and it's not all stop motion or anything it's just talking head and that works for them this, yeah. these these things really work they work well on facebook they work well on youtube they work well as content and people are watching because it's the message it's the delivery if you can master the delivery which founders usually have because you know they've been selling from day one they've been thinking obsessing about this and anyone obsesses more than that yeah in the team and it's just like perfect the video i'm going to refer to is not like absolute bottom of the funnel but probably somewhere just above that because i feel like it's self produced but maybe with some assistance this is one of the first early videos that monday.com put out it's a marketing video and and we'll we'll cut to that in a sec but what's most interesting about that video is and it's really not great production quality but the script and the amount of content and conversation they managed to pack into it including um case studies right like here's here's a customer who's using it for xyz here's another customer using this for you know abc it's 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 really interesting and holistic from that point of view this is what your week is supposed to look like right nice and defined but then your boss has this last minute brilliant idea that you absolutely have to do right now and then kevin is sick so you have to do his stuff too and you lose track of what everyone on your team is doing you lose control chaos ensues so you work nights to keep up and your girlfriend leaves you and you contemplate the meaning of life and yeah It's all over. Nothing is left. Only darkness. But is monday.com really the solution to all of this? Yes. Yes it is. If you look at a lot of the sandwich videos also, yeah. It's narrative and storytelling. Really. I mean it's not very super high production as well. I mean I remember the ones that they shot for Slack for instance. Mm. It's narrative. I mean it's that the guy with the beard talking on camera. in a really compelling way right and and so i think it tells you also the power of the script and the delivery so 6 months ago i get an email from stuart butterfield who wants to talk about making a video for his new thing slack it would change the way teams communicate the truth is i was spending all my time doing email instead of making stuff and something had to change so yeah we tried slack Slack lets us do all our communication in one place. It's like combining multiple forms of messaging and file sharing into one app. Today, given where your business are, so firstly give us some sort of a marker as to, you know, where how you look at the business growth so far and how you peg peg it against let's say other competitors. And therefore, how much would you spend on a great marketing video? For me, I think uh, now that the product's completely built, we would in fact very realistically be open to spending uh, more than 50% of our next round on uh, marketing but now not all of this on uh, content yeah good amount on content i think more on content than ever because i see the you know it, it, the older the con- or content ages well content on youtube content on long form content ages well short form content gives you yeah. instant things but doesn't age well long form content e- age as well and there's some there's something you know i've validated out of my latest experiments where uh, fully on board to pump more money into content and uh, then on advertising because the problem with advertising i've run ads all my life managed great budget the problem with it you just there's good there's yeah. a spike it's yeah, transient a, yeah but then it it just, it just saturates over time whereas with content it comes slowly but when it builds it builds like deep rooted affinity in the uh, audience so uh, in marketing as a whole i think more than uh, 50% of uh, whatever we raise as a funding now talking about video how much would i spend on a video have you spent up to $50000 on a explainer video and just like one yeah. video that's so the max so it's your big piece acceptable your, yeah. budget so that i can do right now that that be just like very very uh, so that's your big budget centerpiece yeah. and then you have But lots of smaller pieces around it right and then all the content etc but again i would say that this is not probably the industry norm this is not probably what uh, you know you'd see around the uh, industry happening such kind of budget 50k 100k per video uh, it just it's just something you know it's, it's just a signaling or rather a projection of our belief in video sure sure what are you seeing in the industry then i think people uh, 
become very sleazy when it comes to content and marketing and things that pay off later you know they don't want to spend on seo they don't want to spend on they want i mean if you're going through a downturn it's just about you know okay give me ads i'll spend 1 rupee get me 1.5 rupees those things become easy go to hack unless you have a founder who understands distribution if they don't you know if you if you, if you have a tech first founder then it's a problem then you know then then they think everything works like tech like you put 10 you get 11 but that's not how you know brands are built that's not how affinity is built because of, you need time is also a factor there are so many things that get into it and uh, which is why you won't see people if you've not personally burnt your hands with the video and gotten dirty with video i don't think you can draw the conviction to spend on yeah. content and you probably won't know what's going to work either yes. for you yes and it's is, not just so it's not just cost right see i think i always think about see cost is not the same right i mean it's not an apples to apples comparison like what are you getting for 50000 right so i always think in terms of roi so um, right. my reference is uh, a sandwich video and why i suggested yeah, 50000 yeah. dollars is because i'm an indian company selling to the us right. where i would need to get uh, the us faces and no, all no, i i'm not yeah. just i'm not i'm not uh, like the number is fine but i'm just saying like yes. you don't look at anything in marketing purely on cost right see like true I mean, hmm. you always look at it in terms of ROI, hmm. and my budget has gone up 10x in the last, I don't know, five years. Hmm. Right, but the kind of things that we're doing as an outcome has also gone hmm. up proportionally, if not more. Hmm. Right. So you always think of cost in terms of ROI. Right. I mean, so, hmm. um, and like he said, right. I mean, a lot of the times when you, and this is especially like one of my pet peeves, actually, that you know you want to account for every dollar that you spend. but you're not living in a deterministic world right you're not living in a spreadsheet world you're living in a very probabilistic world right so sometimes you have to take these bets you have to build conviction right and it takes time and it takes okay time to fail if it doesn't work huh? be okay to fail sometimes be okay i mean you're just smart roi is like 0.2 right like on a scale yeah no but but you just get smarter i mean your next campaign is that much smarter right so when you ask me ke boss uh, is uh, everyone ready to spend 100k you know a video I would say no, unless the founders understand distribution, or if the founders are second time or third time they built businesses before. If it's a first first time founder, founder is like clueless yeah. in his head about where to go. So it's an unfair advantage to have founder who understands marketing because yeah. day one, so you have advantage, and otherwise you're just waiting for a Series C to get a you know really good guy who can uh, drive uh, budgets with conviction. How how important is video content for in your go to market strategy? This is a question that uh, you know we all can ask ourselves. How much of written content do you read mm. on a daily basis? You, I find myself to be reading written content when I'm stuck with something and I'm going to search uh, stuff. There also videos have an upper edge. Like this is you know this is this is being validated by Google's one of these updates that if your landing page has a, has a video, we're going to rank it a little higher. Now coming to video, uh, see, text I think can attract search traffic. Uh, however, videos you can find on social media, videos you can find wheresoever. Like we, there are more avenues to capture attention from via video than text. Text I think is today very limited. And images I don't think. I mean, a picture may speak thousand words or ten thousand words, but I don't think ten thousand words are enough. Hmm. You need more. So you have your own studio set up in the office, right? So how much content do you produce? Video content. Uh, so we are like obsessed with video. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do it for our personal brands. We do it for fun. We do it when we're bored. We do it instead of you know going out to drink one night. We'll just you know go play in the studio. We do it uh, for professional purposes. I would say we shoot. uh anywhere about uh, 15 to 20 videos uh, a week wow now wow. a good amount of them are also short form not all of them are movies uh, probably one movie one movie uh, when i say a movie is like a 4 to 5 minute video and uh, roughly 17 18 short forms which are like 30 seconds one minute ads that we are most of them are talking heads some sort of tutorial some sort of an uh, onboarding video for the client some sort of a preview okay this is how it works So, yeah. Awesome. And what about you, Roshan? I think video is perhaps the most important storytelling tool that you have, right? Um, and also, I think the the important thing is it lets you own your narrative. You know, 
there's just so much of clutter around I and mean, you don't want to be one of the you know 100000 other options um right so so i think it's a very important tool i mean we shoot anywhere we do i think maybe 3 to 5 videos a month right mm. internally also right we have a yeah. lot of uh, you have it uh, on motion graphics folks and editors motion graphics and folks and we do it for customer marketing for someone who has no idea about vimo right and who's going to uh, like if you're going to onboard 10000 people onto your application right i mean it's a big change there's a lot of change management involved and you know they will really appreciate everything that you can do right i mean any small thing that you can do and we you know in the beginning it was us pushing the sales guys that hey why don't you give this to the client and now i mean even you know even yesterday i was on a call with you know our head of sales, sales in india are asking for yeah exactly content. head of sales is like hey please make that video that you made for this other client please please right and so we use video for even um sales acceleration right see vimo is complex enough that it's taken me 5 years to understand and pitch it to someone right when you have a champion for instance in a deal right now if that person has to go and pitch it to 10 others in his organization they need some and yeah. gather consensus i mean it's very very it's hard if you enable them with a video exactly so we we start you know giving them these videos and obviously you can't draw a straight line between you know this video and the closing a half million deal or something but it definitely helps right now coming back to talking about uh, premium you know premium quality films and videos the, the central sort of campaign film um, what are your favorite ones i think we kind of like top line obviously right yeah i mean these are indian folks who've done a great job Amazing. Uh, of you know coming across as a non indian company <laughs> which is sort of uh, necessary when you're in this space the folks who are actually dealing with the problem would know and if i kind of look back at some of the saas companies that have really done well over the last 5 10 15 years right they've all said things that they're bigger than themselves right i mean think about slack slack is glorified chat right i mean people might kill me for that but <laughs> net net right but what do they call themselves they call themselves a workspace for remote i mean it's huge right or even when they started out right they had this no email kind of a thing um and, and i think you know videos in particular help you communicate that grand mission right i mean that you're you're going to do and what you're going to yeah, solve for yeah a wacky bold so. positioning statement yeah yeah so i like oslash there's many things you hear in a workplace how's it going hi it's so good to see you can you guys hear me continue to breathe in the doubt i'm sorry i'm speaking on mute welcome to this two hour presentation oh my god do we have to deadlines But there's one thing you hear the most. I don't have the link. Can somebody send it to me? Because finding links is hard. Here we go again. Some people dig through their email. Some get lost looking for it in their notes. Then someone says, I think someone shared it on a Slack thread last time. Slack thread where? Which Slack thread? And there's always a guy with a whiteboard. Remember All of the product vision is on Google Docs, documentation on Notion. Then we have the design framework. Excuse me. Enough of this. You like oh slash. I really like uh one of the latest campaigns from Razorpay for SMEs yeah. uh in India. Amazing. Oh, Razorpay X. Yeah. The payroll thing. Yeah, the payroll yes. one. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's fantastic. Really nice. really well. yeah. yeah. I'm Shashank Mehta, founder at The Whole Truth. But the sad truth to manage payroll I need many more Shashank. So this trend, like where both of you are hybrid in a sense in your approach to you know using with you know or developing videos, right? Whether it's that sort of centerpiece or it's that support, you know, um, content. Uh, and I and I when I'm when I when I say hi- hybrid, what I mean is this: most of the content you're producing yourself. but it's it's the center pieces that you let's say partner with an agency for or a production house for so is this a trend you're seeing across the industry so we actually want you, to it, yeah is it unique to you because you're so much more comfortable with content creation so we want to get to a place where they they are right now in terms of you know how much they produce and stuff right because it lets you be fast it lets you be topical it lets you be responsive to things right so i would love to have that speed and velocity in my content creation um and you know i mean it just makes sense at this point of time that you know for all of the high production stuff which i don't think we'll ever ever do in house right 
So we'll we'll always rely on Red Bangle Films, which is like an amazing partner for us. A leaky sales funnel can be frustrating, and you can't spend your way out of it. What you need isn't more campaigns or leads. What you need is Vimo. Vimo is a lead management solution that helps you convert more leads into customers. It creates a single window for leads aggregated from various sources and instantly allocates them based on configurable rules to salespeople. The right leads to the right salespeople at the right time. Vimo's lead scoring engine uses machine learning algorithms to learn what leads are likely to convert and improves conversion rates proactively. But that's just the half of it. Yep, because Vimo also nudges next best actions contextually to salespeople. So they know who to engage, when and how. What's more, Vimo captures all sales activities automatically, so salespeople don't have to log them and it offers complete visibility to managers so they can detect leaks and intervene preemptively. Vimo integrates with your CRM and core systems to present a single pane of glass to your sellers. So you can have increased ROI on marketing spend, more revenue per salesperson, and happier customers. Get Vimo today. So all of that stuff, I mean, obviously we're not going to shoot those kind of videos in-house. But, you know, things like, hey, I mean, Yamini is in the office today. Right? Let me get a 30-second soundbite from her. Yeah. Right? Or this, something happened with a client. I mean, let me let me shoot a video. Right? I mean, the client is in the office or whatever. Yeah. Um, and, and those kind of things, right? I think you need to build capacity internally to sort of do that. Because, see, marketing, a key part of marketing is storytelling. And you have to have that content muscle baked into your you know, marketing, right? So I'll give you another angle why this is happening, the hybrid approach. Uh, and what I've seen I, by, you know, being a hybrid is, dude, with content, you need iteration. And if you're relying on an agency, boss, the turnaround time is... And cost. And yeah. cost, of course. But more than cost, it's the turnaround time and the, you know, iteration and the receptivity to iteration. Because that account manager is very likely managing three more accounts, four more accounts. They're not able to think through your messaging. But you're able to rapid test stuff. You're able to rapid test short form. And whatever short form works, that you can eventually go back to an agency and be like, boss, let me do a you know full-fledged show uh, on this angle that's worked. So we iterate a lot. Uh, you know, there are ads that are rinsed and repeated weekly, monthly. So that that gives us a lot of feedback that allows us to laser down today i have certain hypothesis that okay enterprises will buy tomorrow i have a thesis no maybe SaaS will buy finally it turns out that edtech's buying edtech even in edtech it's the bootstrap edtech of uk usa canada you know with video targeting all these segments giving a, them our full shot and then realizing that okay boss maybe this works well and then lasering down there. And then, you know, after all, all these iterations, I can go back to an agency and be like, okay, this angle works. I know exactly the messaging. Now we can sit together and uh, work on, do something, you know, that you guys do best. That is uh, the visuals and, uh, you know, bringing yeah, in the all the elements. Yes. That's the other thing, right? Which is that if you have to produce, let's say, 100 videos, I mean, obviously we won't do it internally, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. I'd, be, I'd have to hire Absolutely. like 10 people internally. So if you have to produce either high production stuff or like very high volume, then I think it makes sense to work with a creative partner. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Roshan and Abhinav. Amazing insights there on using films and videos for SaaS marketing. Thank you for joining us. Hit like, subscribe. There are more amazing episodes coming up on Video Crawl. This is Lakshmi Rebecca signing off.